There's nothing more exciting to us as cyclists than putting some bling on your bike, whether it's a bike with a lot of miles on it or you're building up a brand new bike. In this video, I'm gonna go over some upgrades worth considering in no particular order. Depending on your budget and the type of riding you do, some of this may or may not apply to you, but stick till the end because some may be worth considering. Probably the sexiest thing you can do is put on some carbon wheels on your bike. Besides aesthetics, carbon wheels generally make your bike lighter, provide more aerodynamics and stiffness, and help you accelerate way quicker and climb a lot faster than alloy wheels. The depth of the wheel is gonna depend on the type of riding you do. So if you do a lot of climbing, you wanna aim for a shallower wheel. And if you do a lot of fast, flat, road riding then go for a deeper section wheels the width of the wheel is also going to be important for how the tire is going to be laid out so generally 23 millimeters or larger is going to roll a little bit better now no one said that carbon wheels are going to be cheap so keep your eye out and if you do your research you can find some good bargains since we talked about wheels let's talk about tires there are two main things to consider when buying a tire and that is its suppleness and puncture resistance so something that's very flexible like this is going to roll really well in comparison to something that's as stiff as this. Now, a stiffer tire is going to be more puncture resistant. So again, depending on the type of riding that you do is going to determine which tire is best suited for you. But in general, whether you go for a very supple or a very stiff tire, a wider tire is going to roll a lot better. It's going to help you corner a lot easier it's going to be more comfortable too as you can run lower pressures on it the trend right now in pro cycling is 25 millimeters or wider so i'd aim for something around that range another popular upgrade for cyclists is buying a new saddle when you get a bike from a bike shop it's usually specced out with its own saddle now that doesn't mean that saddle is going to be good or it's going to be uncomfortable for you but you should still try out many different types of saddles to find which one's best for you. And it's tough for me to recommend one particular saddle to you guys because we all have different bums. So you gotta just try out different saddles, but there are different types of components to consider that will help you determine which is best for you. The first thing to consider is the curvature of the saddle. A more flat saddle is gonna help you move around a lot. So if you like to change your position while you ride and a curved saddle is gonna help keep you in place if you like to ride in one particular spot. A saddle will also curve from side to side, so a more rounded saddle is going to be much more comfortable for longer rides than a flat saddle. The width of the saddle should accommodate your sit bone, which is why it's so important to have your sit bone measured and have a proper bike fit done by a professional. Saddles can also come with a cutout or a channel in the middle to reduce numbness if that is something you experience. The padding of the saddle can also play a big difference in comfort, so more padding does not necessarily mean more comfort. Aim for something with minimal padding and with the addition of the padding in your cycling shorts, you should be just fine. Also, saddles that use plastic or injected carbon in the shells can also make the ride a lot more comfortable. And in terms of rails, carbon rails are gonna be lighter, but titanium rails and chromoly rails are not that much heavier and the price point is much lower. Bottom line, try out different types of saddles and find what works best for you. Sticking with the theme of comfort, handlebars can make a huge difference as well. They come in all shapes and sizes. A compact handlebar is going to be a lot more comfortable and easy to shift with, while a traditional bar is gonna make you sit a lot lower in the drops and make you more aerodynamic. Also, wider handlebars can be a little bit more comfortable while narrower bars can be more aerodynamic. In terms of the material, yes, carbon is lighter and arguably more damping, but in the case of a crash, when you crash, carbon is more likely to break, alloy is more likely to survive, a crash so that's something to think about many pros actually don't run carbon bars because of this reason plus alloy bars aren't that much heavier and fortunately many manufacturers now make the same geometry in different types of materials swapping out your current stem for a longer one can provide more aerodynamics but you shouldn't have to sacrifice comfort
preferred. So if you feel like you're stretching too much, stick with a shorter stem. Carbon stems and oversized stems can provide a bit more stiffness. And I've been running the Zip SL Sprint Stem, which is the same one that Peter Sagan uses. And I can say that I do feel a lot more stiffness and control when sprinting out of the saddle. Also seat posts, they're really not regarded as an upgrade, but can make a big difference when it comes to comfort as well. So a carbon seat post and one with a setback is going to be a lot more comfortable than in an alloy or a straight or a bladed seat post. But before buying any of the components I've just mentioned because of comfort, tire pressure plays the biggest role in terms of the comfort of your ride. So why not just experiment with around 90 to 100 PSI in your tires before going out to the shop and buying any of those parts. Another upgrade people don't consider are the bearings in their headset, bottom brackets, wheel hubs, and even pulley wheels. Ceramic bearings like the ones from Ceramic Speed can make a huge difference in terms of the smoothness of your ride. I've been using them for the past year and I have to say I feel like I can spin forever. There's really no resistance in holding me back. Besides the reduction in resistance, ceramic bearings also last a lot longer, so you get what you pay for. So if you guys are in the market for new bearings or you just wanna get the most out of your bike, definitely consider ceramic bearings. By far, my favorite upgrade is putting a power meter on your bike. I made a whole video on how to choose the best power meter for yourself, but yeah, power meters are great for pacing yourself, making you last your whole ride as opposed to burning up and, and getting dropped. They're pricey, but definitely worth it. Now at the risk of having people freak out on me, my next recommendation for an upgrade is a whole group set. Now, if you have a group set that's working perfectly fine, then that's not for you. But if your group set is holding you back, you don't take care of your drivetrain and everything's just falling apart, definitely consider investing in one of the newer 11 speed group sets. I can't speak for Campagnolo or SRAM, but I have ridden and owned Shimano 105, Ultegra, Durace, Di2, and I can say that it's really quality stuff. It's day and night from the 10 speed stuff. But if you can only make one upgrade to your group set, then I would say swap out your current crank set for a carbon one because not only will it be lighter, but it's gonna be stiffer as well and gonna help you climb and sprint a lot faster. But even if you don't invest in a new group set, definitely put on a chain catcher because in case your chain slips, it's gonna protect your frame from getting damaged. As far as bar tape goes, fresh is best. So find the ones that works best for you and swap them out when needed. My favorites are the gel or cork tapes and the great thing about those are that they're generally vegan and eco-friendly, which is cool. Last but not least, pedals. They're a great upgrade for your bike. I can't recommend just one because there are so many out on the market, but they typically vary by the material use, weight, the width of the pedal and the number of sides you can actually clip in. I can definitely recommend clipless pedals as they can help you transfer more power onto your bike. Plus they make your ride just that much more comfortable than regular pedals. So there you go. Now you have a couple things to think about when upgrading or even building your road bike. If you guys have questions, send them down below and if I miss any upgrade that you guys feel like I should have mentioned, also post it in the comments section and give this video a like if you found it useful and subscribe for more videos on cycling. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you in the next video.